Ladies and gentlemen, kindly be seated. Good evening to you all. Welcome to Ben Gurion University of the Negev. We are assembled in the Kreitman Plaza for the conferment of honorary doctoral degrees as part of the 43rd annual Board of Governors meeting. We're delighted that you're here to share this festive occasion with us. I'm now pleased to invite the recipients of the honorary doctorate. Cherie Blair, United Kingdom. <laughs> Professor Patrick Abisher, Switzerland. Professor Joshua Blau, Israel. <laughs> Professor Mario Capecchi, United States. <laughs> Ruth Flinkman Mirandi, United States. Professor Robert Langer, United States. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Chairman of the Executive Committee, faculty, distinguished honorees, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my great privilege to welcome you on this lovely evening to our honorary doctoral degree ceremony here at the Kreitman Plaza of Ben Gurion University of the Negev. I hope that you have experienced a little of what is so unique to this university and have enjoyed exploring our beautiful campus during the last two days. I trust that you have had the opportunity to meet and talk with some with our scholars, researchers, and students, that you have felt welcome and you have gained a good sense of our achievements and vision. In each of their fields, the individuals here tonight have all gone above and beyond and are very truly outstanding role models. In Proverbs 24, three to four, it says, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge are the chambers filled with all pleasant and precious riches. We are privileged to have with us tonight three distinguished scientists whose contribution to academia and research would be difficult to match. From the humanities, we have a scholar of Arabic language and literature. From the public sector, a woman of remarkable vision and energy. And we have an outstanding philanthropist. <laughs> Those of you who had the honor to hear Professor Patrick Abishar earlier today will know that he is a doctor and a brilliant scholar in the field of neuroscience and a leader in the search for treatment of neurodegenerative disease and obviously a wonderful lecturer. Throughout that distinguished career, he has won many awards and in tandem with his outstanding research, he has demonstrated a deep commitment to the education of next generation of scientists. He has broken important ground in the collaboration of academia and industry, has played a key role in the advancement of Switzerland in the international arena while nurturing cooperative research for Switzerland and Israel as well. Professor Abishair, we are deeply, deeply appreciative of all that you have done and delighted that you could be with us today. Thank you. 
Sherry Blair is a public figure, a talented barrister, a working mother, who looked around the world and in particular at women in marginalized and impoverished society, and came to the conclusion that with the right support, women can overcome many of the hurdles they face and can play an important part in the economics of their societies. This visionary woman then sprang into action, taking her commitment to the empowerment of women in peripheral societies to another level. She set up a foundation for women which started small and has grown to be a major force of change for women and for society and a role model of turning a vision into a reality. So well noted by David Ben-Gurion, unimplemented vision is a false vision. Mr. Blair, we are so happy and honored to have you with us and we applaud your initiatives. <laughs> Professor Joshua Blau is a giant in the field of Hebrew linguistics. He was the former president of the Academy of Hebrew Language and is a member of the Israel Academy of Sciences and Humanities. His research interests include Judeo-Arabic philology, Semitic historical linguistics, Hebrew linguistics, and more. He has published a rich and vast collection of academic work. Much of the research we applaud these days is science and technology. However, we should not lose sight of the important role of the humanities. Magnificent cultures have always been richer for their appreciation for language, poetry, and prose. And Professor Blau has gifted us priceless riches in his legacy of work. Professor Blau, your honor is our honor, and thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> Professor Mario Capecchi is a remarkable man with a remarkable life story. His scientific and academic career, and specifically his groundbreaking discoveries with regard to embryonic stem cells and DNA recombination in mammals, led to the creation of the technology of gene targeting and silencing in mice. His lifelong passion for and contribution of a more humane face to genetics and the depth of range in his research now being applied to virtually all areas of biomedicine from basic research to the development of new therapies is truly extraordinary. Mario, more than 15 years ago, you were a guest speaker at the fetal pathology conference that I organized here in the Dead Sea. Even back then, we envisioned your Nobel Prize. Your presence here is a great honor to us, and I thank you very much for making the long journey to be with us here. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Robert Langer is the most cited engineer in history. He has received over 200 major awards, and just this week in Jerusalem, he was awarded a prestigious Wool Foundation Prize for his, and I quote, innovations in polymer chemistry that have had a profound impact on medicine, particularly in the areas of drug delivery and tissue engineering. 10 years ago, Forbes magazine predicted that he would be one of the 15 innovators worldwide who would reinvent our future. Professor Langer, you are an inspiration to all in the field of biomedical engineering and to young scientists and research colleagues, many of whom were your students, and more than just a few from Israel and Ben-Gurion University. Thank you very much for allowing us to honor you. <clears throat> she envisions a field and buys it, and from the fruit of her handiwork, she plants a vineyard. She speaks with wisdom, and a lesson of kindness is on her tongue. These famous lines from Eshet Chayil could have been written for Ruth Flinkman Morandi. Ruth is an accomplished and generous woman 
who over the years has become part of the fabric of Ben Gurion University. Her support of health, education, and culture means a great deal to this university, and her loyalty to the American associates of the university is greatly valued. Her passion for education and her respect for knowledge, especially in the realms of, of advanced technologies and nanotechnology, have led her to help us to cultivate promising young scientists whose work will provide a future legacy for us and for her as well. Ruth, I thank you for all your most dedicated work back there in LA. On behalf of Ben Gurion University and your kind support of this campus, but I also thank you for your support of Israel Academia in general. Thank you very much for allowing you, us to honor you tonight. We are also celebrating this evening, and for the first time, the lifetime work and contribution of a most remarkable and beloved friend of Ben Gurion University, and indeed, of humanity. Berti Labner is a major figure at Ben Gurion University since 1975. Berti is a vice chairman of the Board of Governors and was a recipient of an honorary doctorate in 1986. Brought up in a home where the values of caring and giving were taught and treasured, Berti has over the years supported our students and encouraged them with projects and prizes to give to the less fortunate and to take responsible roles in society. He has supported research and at the same time, most difficult circumstances and times in history, he has promoted ties between Ben Gurion University and universities in South Africa. Bertie has said once that without doubt, one of the most rewarding parts of his life has been his association with Ben Gurion University. And I would say, Bertie, that one of the most rewarding relationships this university has is with you, Bertie Labner. He is a role model of par excellence, dedicated and devoted to us, as well as to the underprivileged communities in South Africa, and most worthy of the honor bestowed on him this evening. Thank you, Bertie. Our ceremony this evening celebrates a group of individuals who each, in his or her own way, has benefited mankind by making a major contribution to science, to education, to society, and to the world. These are people who affect change and create an impact that resounds among the communities and nations. Dear honorees, your actions and accomplishments are models and inspirations to our all here tonight. We are proud and delighted to have you join our family of distinguished honorary doctorates, and we took look forward to welcome you on many future other occasions to this university, and please feel that this is a second home to you. Thank you very much. How do people become great? Obviously, they must be smart, but not necessarily the smartest. They have to be very good at what they are doing. However, this characteristic is common to many people. But above all, great people, leaders, are tested and discovered when having to take difficult, often unpopular, decisions, when their vision is put to the real test of commitment. Today, we confer honorary doctorates on outstanding people. And in doing so, we not only recognize the special attributes and contributions, but we also acknowledge our shared values, and we declare that these newly minted honorary doctors of philosophy are examples to be emulated. We ourselves are honored by their joining our club, so to speak. Our honorary doctorates are chosen from three different general realms or categories. Contribution to science and knowledge, contribution to society and culture, and contribution to the university itself. Today's honorees are women and men 
whose lives and actions inspire us all to do better, to reach higher, and to build a greater university that would in indeed fulfill David Ben-Gurion's dream of, of, of Oxford and Yavne on the scene. Thank you very much for accepting the title of Dr. Honoris Causa from our Ben-Gurion University. I now call upon Bertie Lubner to rise and come forward to receive the university's highest honor, the university's Lifetime Achievement Award. I invite the president of the university to rise and join the honoree. Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby bestows the Lifetime Achievement Award upon Bertie Lubner in recognition of an exceptional man whose belief in the power of people to effect innovative social change has made a momentous contribution to his native South Africa and in Israel, to a cherished friend of BGU whose steadfast dedication as Vice Chairman of the Board of Governors has enabled the university to pursue its founding vision and in gratitude to a far-sighted philanthropist who celebrates true altruism through his support of volunteers in the community, creating a new reality of hope for the benefit of the residents in both countries and around the world. Bertie Lubner, we will be delighted to hear from you on this occasion. Chairman Alex Goran, my darling Rivka Kami, and I can say this in public, Amos Drury, you're a wonderful guy. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> you know, I think we must all acknowledge that we learn from mistakes. The big thing is not to make the same ones, you know, make new ones. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about when I say what happened to me at a speech I made here at Ben Gurion some years ago. <clears throat> and I thought I did quite well. When I was finished, an elderly man comes up to me and says, Lubner, you've got a damn cheek to stand and talk in front of us. You've spoken such rubbish. You know, I think you're a disgrace. You know, what can I say? He walks away, but my host, one of the professors says, don't worry about that alter kaka, that old man. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He hasn't got a mind of his own. He only repeats what everybody else says, you see? <laughs> <laughs> So I hope I'm not going to make the same mistake all over again. <clears throat> but you know, in 75, 1975, I was made the most fantastic offer by the then president of Ben Gurion University, new president, Joe Tokoa. And he asked if I would like to become the president of the South African Associates. Even though I didn't know what I was leading myself in for, I agreed, because I'm sure you all agree with me, that you know, everybody wants to be a president. Even in Israel, we've taught, told people that we want to be the president. But when the grandeur of the moment passed, <clears throat> I realized in order to fulfill my responsibilities, it meant competing against what were well-established universities in Israel. I nevertheless decided to come and see for myself. And before making the final decision, to take up or not to take up the post. There were two key outcomes that changed my mind and allowed me to remain loyal to this wonderful organization. The first was the joy of meeting the quality of people who made up the core of the university in those days. They represented to me to be true Zionists who were prepared to devote their lives for an educational desert institute whereas they could have secured wonderful posts elsewhere. The second, almost as important, was when I was shown newly established faculties 
which were working on how to fulfill the university's mandate of not only surviving, but succeeding in the desert. This enabled me to twin this university with those in South Africa because we both had something in common, common challenges. We were both short of clean water, of arable land, and adequate skills, and so on. But like anything in life, <clears throat> it needs a visionary, like Ben Gurion himself, to create what became this miracle. Therefore, this university was created with very little, and its success is undoubtedly all about the triumph of the human spirit. In fact, it is, its triumphs is a microcosm of Israel and Zionism itself. How could I have imagined 38 years later that we would be enrolling nearly 20,000 students and as such, I can say quite beautifully, they have become the water in the desert in their own way. This unique student body has become the character of the university <clears throat> Pardon me, as they represent a special relationship of joint endeavor between the students, academics, and administrator. But there's a lesson from this. Unless we as a people around the world are united with others who make up the fabric of any country, we can never win any war on human rights, on identity, on overcoming poverty, unless we stop working in silos. Let's unite together our joint efforts. I now wish to emphasize a very strong personal philosophy that has rewarded me in my life. Your first priority in life is to make a success of your own life and obviously for your family. However, it is only true success when you can translate it into adding value into other people's lives. There are many people who have inspired me in my life, none more so than my late father, Mori, Ben Gurion, and Nelson Mandela. Each of them, in their own way, had to pursue a life of hard work and sacrifice for them to succeed in their goals so that they, in turn, could add value to the lives of many people around the world. My father often quoted Churchill, who said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And there's also another beautiful statement. If you haven't got charity in your heart, you have the worst kind of heart trouble. What a great privilege I've had to have been associated with Nelson Mandela since his release in 1990. And through this friendship, BGU was able to offer him, and which he accepted with delight, a doctorate like we're going to see tonight. It is impossible for me to name many, many wonderful people who strode this campus with commitment and pride. There are nevertheless a few people who themselves should receive Lifetime Achievers Award, but I believe I'm a little bit late on that because the among the contributors that I've written is was Abishai Braverman, who I'm sure you'll all agree. If anybody deserved a Lifetime Achievers Award, that was him and Professor Rivka Kami. Both of them in their own inimitable way brought about the, the development of this organization from a small institution to what it is now, a world-class institute of teaching learning. Avishai was not only a visionary, but was all fire and fury, but a great, great achiever. And I'm sure that you all are gonna <coughs> join me when I say that we are so fortunate that Rivka Kami, our present respected and adorable present, is now our current leader. She's not only the very icon of academic excellence and leadership, but she's just pure grace personified. Will you join me in applauding her? I also wish to pay tribute and to acknowledge those outstanding icons who sit here in front of us today, who are receiving their doctorates tonight, as you are being acknowledged for your fantastic contribution to humanity. Hearty congratulations to each and every one of you, as it is not only a recognition of what you've achieved, but it brings a message that there's still so much more to be done. 
I would like to take the opportunity to read a quote that one of my children sent me, which I believe we all subscribe to. Politics without principles, education without character, science without humanity, commerce without morality are not only useless, but they are relatively dangerous. And now, how do I adequately express the sheer joy I have experienced when I was told of this pending honor? I still, to this day, can't believe it. If I wasn't standing here, I still wouldn't believe it. But, you know, one should never be expected to be rewarded for doing the right thing. And when it does happen, there really aren't words to express what will forever reside in my heart and my family's heart. Before thanking you all, I wish to record both another philosophy and a fact. This will only take another 20 minutes. You cannot succeed in life without the mentoring and help of others. This applies no more so when it comes to the commitment, love, and affection I've had from my family, who have made everything I've achieved possible because of their ongoing love and support. I'm overjoyed that I have many of our family sitting up here in front with us tonight, particularly my wife, Hilary, who has been at my side at all times. I therefore, ladies and gentlemen, want to thank you, really thank you, particularly for my, from, for, to my BGU family, who inspire us to feel the energy and experience the miracle that we all have when we are here. Thank you very much. I would like to call upon Cherie Blair to please rise and come forward. I invite the president of the university and the rector to rise and join the honorary. The Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Cherie Blair, CBE, in recognition of an accomplished barrister who has dedicated her brilliant legal career to promoting human rights and gender equality, in appreciation of the visionary founder of the Cherie Blair Foundation for Women, which seeks to empower women throughout the developing world, especially in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, by helping them to gain financial independence, opening the gates to higher education, and providing equal opportunities for business initiatives that will bring growth and prosperity to their communities and societies. With esteem for the recipient of the honor of Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire for her generous support on these issues, in acknowledgement of a social activist for her personal involvement and volunteer activities in a variety of charitable organizations, including those providing support for breast cancer patients, helping children from disadvantaged communities, and promoting prison reform, and in deep appreciation for her efforts to bring people closer together in areas of conflict and to spread peace and brotherhood throughout the world, by conferring upon her the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The Rector will confer the hood. The President will present the scroll. Dr. Blair, we will be delighted to hear from you. Well, I am overwhelmed and delighted to accept this wonderful honor that the university does me tonight, particularly so when I see the distinguished group of fellow uh, honorees uh, on the platform here tonight and hear their amazing stories. 
for me, it's a, it's a big moment for a girl from Liverpool um, who never, ever thought uh, at the time that she became the first person of her family in the university that she would ever have a collection of honorary degrees. It's particularly a privilege for me to accept this honorary degree from this university, a university which has such a global focus and which knows from its very nature of its mission the power of education. You have kindly mentioned the work that my Foundation for Women does to encourage entrepreneurship across the world and particularly in the Middle East, in Africa and in Asia. And I was so delighted to be able earlier this afternoon to share a little bit of our work with you and to have such an engaging discussion with my fellow panel members and indeed with people in the audience. And the work we do to help support women with skills training, with confidence building and with access to capital uh, is a cause very dear to my heart. But I will be remiss in accepting this honor tonight if I didn't mention, of course, again, the importance of education. It reminds me in receiving this degree, not only of my own actual academic uh, degree from the LSE, but also of the fact that across the world, too many women don't have access to that right to education that we take for granted. And I think very much at the moment, in particular, of another university across the world that I am associated with as its chancellor. That's a university called the Asian University for Women in Chittagong in Bangladesh. It's a new university, and this year, for the first time, the very first group of young women will graduate from that university on the 18th of May. Like me, those women are the first in their families to go to university, and they come from backgrounds across Asia, from the Indian subcontinent, from Southeast Asia, from Vietnam, from Cambodia, from China, from 12 different countries across that region. And they attend and get that degree at a time when Bangladesh itself is under turmoil. There are a group of Islamicists in that country who don't agree with the idea of women getting education, who don't agree with the idea of peacefully putting over your views, who are at the moment provoking riots and violence in the street to support an extreme force kind of Islam, which in particular uh, in the 13 demands highlights two which are a di direct contradiction of what the Asian University for Women stands for. One is a demand that there be total segregation between men and women in Bangladesh, something that would mean the girls would not have access to the male professors that they do at the moment. And the other is a demand that all the advancements for women that have taken place in Bangladesh over recent years, advancements in education, advancements in economic empowerment, be rolled back in the name of a perverted view of a religion. So when I accept this tonight, I do so to stand behind those brave and determined young women in Chittagong who want to prove to the world that education is their right and I would like to dedicate this honor, this honorary degree to them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Blair. I now call upon Professor Patrick Abisher to rise and come forward to receive his honorary degree. I invite the president of the university and the rector to join him. The Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Patrick Abisher in recognition of a distinguished academic 
president of École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, who has led this institution to international academic excellence, community service and pluralism, in acknowledgement of a doctor and a brilliant scholar in the field of neuroscience, who has examined information processing in the brain and the development and function of cells in the search for treatment for neurodegenerative diseases, in appreciation of a member of the Swiss Academies of Medicine and Engineering, an award-winning scholar who has devoted his time to educating the next generation of scientists while serving in key academic positions. In appreciation of a respected and experienced leader in the realm of research, the founder of three biotechnology startups, for his contribution to the close collaboration between industry and academia for the advancement of Switzerland as a whole, and in gratitude to a colleague and partner who supports the fostering of research ties between Switzerland and Israel through promoting cooperation with the Jacob Blaustein Institutes for Desert Research, thus contributing to the development of the Negev for the benefit of all of its inhabitants, by conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Dr. Abisher, you are invited to respond. Mr. Chairman, President Kami, honorees, distinguished colleagues, dear friends of the Ben-Gurion University, let me first thank you for the bottom of our heart for this great honor to confer me the Dr. Honoris Causa. Usually as university president, I am on the other role, conferring some. And I must admit that it is very touching to receive one, and especially in this university. I was deeply impressed with what I've seen here, with the energy, with the enthusiasm, with a sense of social responsibility that all universities should fail. I'm extremely impressed that this was done in this part of the world. I do remember about 10 years ago visiting Israel with my family and passing through this town. And I had noted that there was a university. I walked around, and yesterday when I came, I couldn't recognize it. It has grown so much, both in size, but also in quality. And this is due to the commitment of the faculty. A university, I like to say, is its faculty. Without the faculty, we wouldn't be here. But also the students, the quality of the students that we attract and that we give, or we try to give, what we think is useful and important for their life, but also for society in more general. I must admit that I feel very much at home here. It is also a bit like Switzerland, a small country that doesn't have natural resources, that has to rely on its people and on the education that it provides to its people. Often, the small countries have a key role in providing this, this openness, this international flavor that you feel in those countries. Because we have to. I always remind people that in the French part of Switzerland, we're 1.5 million. You cannot make a great university out of 1.5. You have to be open. The openness that is provided by the university is probably an absolute key feature for the world of tomorrow. I would also like to say that we're living in a very interesting time. For the first time, probably, since Gutenberg, we're being challenged in the way we're going to convey knowledge and probably also do research in the future. 
As you may know, the revolution of information technology is bringing new tools that can make us think beyond our campuses. Several of us have put their courses online, and we have realized that the world is thirsty, thirsty for knowledge. In our university, it took 10 years to go from four to 9,000. In six months, we reached 250,000 students, and we believe that next year we may have one million students. The amazing thing is you see, and you can see with the technology, where are those students coming from? And I was extremely touched by the fact that a large number come from Africa. The connectivity that is provided by the technology of information allows greater population to have access to knowledge. And I think we have to integrate this in the campus that we're going to create in the future. We will have to find the right blend between what is so important about a campus, the socialization, the living, the sharing, that could fortunately not be replaced by virtual technologies. But I think we will have to find the right way to proceed. And I think this university has what it needs to go beyond. And my wish is that the journey will go for a long time even better, and that we will be able to mutually exchange more researchers, more students, because I think one of the most important things that university does is to provide exchanges, culture exchanges. It's only through this that mankind can find solution, and I think the future is through knowledge. And promoting this knowledge is a fundamental mission of university, and yours does it extremely well. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Abisher. I now call upon Professor Joshua Blau to please rise and come forward. I ask the president and the rector to join him. The Senate and Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Joshua Blau in recognition of one of the pillars of Hebrew linguistics, a preeminent scholar of the Hebrew and Arabic languages and the ancient and modern Semitic languages, who deepened the investigation of the foundations on which the magnificent cultures of the Middle East are based. In appreciation of a leading authority on Judeo-Arabic of the Middle Ages, who did much to elucidate the inalienable assets of Jewish culture, including the writings of Maimonides and written works from the Cairo Geniza. In acknowledgement of an outstanding academic, the author of many books who endeavored to instill the tenets of Hebrew grammar in generations of students and researchers. With deep esteem for the third president of the Academy of the Hebrew Language, a laureate of the Israel Prize in Linguistics and Hebrew Language, and the recipient of many other prestigious awards. And in recognition of his important contribution to the research of the Hebrew language through the ages, from the language of the Bible to the present, enriching the heritage of the Jewish people. By conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Dr. Blau, you're invited to respond. Sir, I am very proud indeed of receiving the, from the Ben-Gurion University the title of Dr. Honoris Causa, especially since I am this year representing the, in general, Israel, and in particular, the Israeli Academy. 
as you have heard, my fields of research are in the main prehistoric biblical Hebrew and medieval Judeo-Arabic, a language in which uh, many of the most important uh, books of uh, Judaism were composed. In the la I have uh, published several grammars in these languages, uh, composed a dictionary of medieval Judeo-Arabic and edited the responsa of Maimonides. In the last few years, I am working with Professor Simon Hopkins on uh, some documents stemming from the Geniza, st stemming from the second half of the first millennium, a period about which we do not know too much. It is to be hoped that these documents will illuminate this, uh, uh, peri this dark period. And again, I want to thank the Ben-Gurion University for conveying the title of Dr. Honoris Causa. And let me conclude with another expression of thanks. I want to thank my wife, Shulamit, who is sitting here among, among the guests uh, and who, have, uh, who, who has uh, lived with me for 68 years. Thank you very much. We now proceed with the ceremony, and I call upon Professor Mario Capecchi to please rise to receive his honorary degree. Would the president and the rector join him? The Senate and Executive Committee of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Mario R. Capecchi in recognition of a pioneer in the study of human genetics, whose innovative research has led to a new understanding of the workings of the human body and genetic diseases. In acknowledgement of a brilliant scientist whose discoveries, especially his work in gene silencing of mouse embryo derived cells, have enabled scientists to create desired mutations in any gene, thus revolutionizing this area of study and leading the way to curing serious and sometimes life-threatening illnesses, as well as providing a better understanding of the development of the fetus in the womb and the aging process. With deep appreciation of a man with remarkable strength of character, whose exceptional life story is intertwined with one of the darkest periods in modern history, and who became a scientist whose work enhances the welfare and health of human beings worldwide, for which he received numerous prestigious awards and with admiration for a Nobel laureate in physiology or medicine who devotes his time and energies to nurturing a new generation of students and researchers, additional links in the chain of science that ensure the development and prosperity of the human race. By conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Dr. Capecchi, we invite you now to please respond. This is indeed an, an honor uh, to receive uh, an accolade from uh, <coughs> Ben Gurion University on the Negev. You should be proud of your university for its excellence and its vitality. And uh, what I've witnessed today is remarkable. 
I've always been in great admiration of Israel and its people, what you've accomplished from this very rugged country. And through simply willpower, tenacity, and ingenuity. I share with you also a little bit of legacy, though your wounds and have been much, much deeper and much graver than mine. My, <clears throat> my mother, I owe much more than my life. She was uh, received her university training at the Sorbonne. Her passion was poetry. And then she became a lecturer there in poetry and literature. She then became political. She realized, and this is in the 30s, a time when it was not popular, that of the horrors that are likely to come from both Nazism and fascism. And she joined a group of poets known as the Bohemians and began pamphleteering, even though she knew she would be uh, at peril with them. In 1937, then she moved to uh, southern Tyrol, the uh, Alps of Italy, in a small uh, chalet, and there continued her political activities. She was picked up in 1939 uh, and in jail, jailed for six months in Perugia. And then in 1941, the Gestapo came to pick her up. She knew, she anticipated this. And I understood a little. At that time, I was three and a half years old. I had learned from my mother both German and Italian. And so I could understand the transactions. And more that I would likely not see my mother for a long time to come, if ever. But she had anticipated her arrest and sold most of her possessions, given the money to a peasant family that she knew to take care of me because she thought I would be much better off with them than with her. And she was right. After about a year, and then in, in 41, then she was transported to Germany, and we believe interned in Dachau, though that documentation isn't solid. In, after uh, living with the peasant family for about a year, uh, the money ran out, and so they couldn't afford me, and so I went into the streets until uh, age nine. In 1945, Munich was liberated, uh, and she had survived miraculously the camp, and then she took almost two years to find me, to retrace my steps as I moved further and further south as my cover was being blown with one town after another. Uh, a week after uh, we w she found me, she found me on my birthday oct in October, October 6th, 1946. And a week later, she got money from her brother who had been living in the United States uh, for two boat trips. And t two weeks later, we arrived in New York. And I remember spending the whole night looking at the La Statue of Liberty. C curiously, my aunt, uh, my aunt and uncle had actually started a commune, a kibbutz in Pennsylvania. They were Quakers, but the commune was open to all races, all religions, and that's where I received my first education. Uh, thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Kapeki. I now call upon Ruth Flinkman Mirandi to please rise and come forward. The Senate and Executive Committee of Ben Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Ruth Flinkman Mirandi in recognition of an accomplished and generous woman who shares the vision of Ben-Gurion University of the Negev, with esteem for one who devoted her life to giving to the Jewish people and the state of Israel, thus strengthening the foundations of its development. 
with deep appreciation for her dedication and allegiance to numerous noble causes, including the promotion of health, education, and culture. With gratitude for her steadfast commitment over the years and her extensive involvement with the American Associates, Ben Gurion University of the Negev, as one of the founders of the Southwest Region Chapter and as National Vice President, and in acknowledgement of a member of the Ben Gurion Society and the Living Legacy Society, for her significant contribution to the promotion of research and deepening of knowledge, especially in the realms of advanced technology and nanotechnology, and the fostering of promising young scientists at the university, for the advancement of the Negev and the country as a whole, and a brighter future for all its residents. By conferring upon her the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Dr. Flinkman Morandi, we would be delighted to hear your response. President Carmi, Chairman Alex Gorner, Rector Svi Hakan, fellow Board of Governors and ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Thank you for including me in this prestigious group of honorees and my congratulations to all of you. I am so deeply honored to be awarded an honorary doctorate by BGU. In the 20 years or so I've been associated, I have been very impressed and proud of the innovative scientific accomplishments that have been realized to benefit all of mankind. The people I have been privileged to meet have immeasurably enriched my life. I would especially like to recognize Philip Gompertz, who is the Executive Director of American Associates Western Region, who has not only raised amazing amounts of funds, but who has also done a fabulous job of raising awareness and promoting BGU's relevance in the academic world. I wish to pay tribute to my late husband, Stan Flinkman, who originally joined me in support of BGU, to my children, Louis Michael, Russell, and future daughter-in-law, Leah Bell, and in absentia, my daughter, Linda, my dear husband, Ben Mirandi, for their continuous love and support. And I'm very proud to be part of the BGU family, which has been recruiting the best and the brightest faculty and students from all over the globe. And I just, I thank you so much for this very special honor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Flinkman Mirandi. I now call upon Professor Robert Langer to please come forward to receive his honorary degree. I would ask the President, the Rector, and Professor Joseph Cost, Dean of the Faculty of Engineering Sciences and former student of Professor Langer, to please come forward for the awarding of the honorary degree. The Senate and the Executive Committee of Ben Gurion University of the Negev hereby resolve to honor Professor Robert Langer in deep appreciation of a scientist and biomedical engineer whose groundbreaking research has led to the saving of countless lives. With esteem for a multidisciplinary researcher who developed many innovative medical technologies, including a method to delay angiogenesis in the fight against cancer and polymers that aid in tissue engineering and the controlled release of drugs. In acknowledgement of a highly acclaimed academic who has won many major awards, including the Wolf Prize, the United States National Medal of Science, and the United States National Medal of Technology and Innovation, who devotes his time and energy to nurturing the next generation of outstanding researchers and engineers. In recognition of an entrepreneur and leader who serves as an example for combining academic research and the biotechnology industry, who has turned discoveries made in the laboratory into drugs and innovative treatments for illnesses including cancer, diabetes, and heart disease, 
and vaccines and advanced diagnostic tools and established and nurtured biomedical startups and in gratitude for his immense contribution to advancing the general health and welfare of mankind by conferring upon him the degree of Dr. Philosophiae Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Lange, you are kindly invited to respond. Thank you so much. It's an incredible honor for me to receive this honorary doctorate from this great university, both because of what the university has done and is doing, and also for the company that I'm keeping this evening. I thought I'd take a minute just to explain how I got here as uh, my career as an engineer hasn't been all that straightforward. Um, when I got my chemical engineering degree at MIT in the 1970s, almost every chemical engineer went into the oil industry. And I wasn't very excited about that. I remember thinking that I wanted to do something to help people. And uh, I had this dream that I might use my background to help people's health. And I applied to a lot of different hospitals and medical schools, and none of the people I wrote to ever wrote me back. But uh, one day, uh, one of the people in my lab mentioned to me that there was a surgeon named Judah Folkman in Harvard Medical School, and they said to me that sometimes he hired unusual people. He thought very highly of Dr. Folkman. I won't say what he thought about me. But uh, what I began working on were ways of trying to see if we could find substances that could stop blood vessels from growing in the body, but that would hopefully be a new way to treat cancer. But critical to that procedure was a way of, of testing it. And to do that, we had to develop new plastics that could um, take these molecules and release them over long periods of time. Now, the only thing that, one thing that was a problem with that is that the scientific literature said that that wasn't possible, that you couldn't have these substances being released. The only thing that I had going for me is I hadn't read that. <laughs> so I experimented uh, anyhow, and I actually spent several years in the laboratory ex examining different techniques, and I actually did find over 200 different ways to get it to not work. <laughs> but eventually I, I did find a way to enable these plastics to work. And when I did, pretty much all of the other chemical engineers and polymer chemists said that what I had done was wrong, that it was, um, you know, that it couldn't be scientifically correct, and it made it very difficult for me to get research grants, to even get hired at uh, different faculty positions. But over time, fortunately, you know, we kept struggling, and eventually uh, we were proved correct, and today these principles and these systems, as was mentioned, are used all over the world in new medical treatments uh, for various different diseases. You know, as a scientist, I, th I always think there's two things that I, I'm proud of. One is the accomplishments that we've been able to make scientifically, but the other that I'm even more proud of is how well my students and postdocs have done. And one of the things that makes me particularly grateful to receive this degree tonight is uh, two of my very top trainees, Yossi Coast, who you just saw is actually Dean of Engineering here at Ben-Gurion and has made enormous contributions as a biomedical engineer. He's already been elected as a foreign member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering. And the other, Smidar Kohn, is also one of my former postdocs, came about 10 years later and has already created, made discoveries and engineered, uh, made new findings that are helping people with heart disease and other, other ailments. And I just feel incredibly proud of them as representatives of this university and all that they do. So I wanna, well. <laughs> so I wanna thank 
them. I want to thank all of you. I particularly want to thank my life, wife, Laura, who without all her support and love, I would never be here or never be able to do any of the things that I've talked about. It's just a tremendous honor for me to be here tonight, and thank you all very, very much.